Cavalheiro, aqui está o meu cartão. Tchá, tchá, tá voltou. Não, tchá, tchá, Não, senhor, José Carioca, Rio de Janeiro, Brasil. Outside of classic Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Goofy, very few Disney characters have been able to continually stay more active as part of Disney's roster of cartoons than Jose Carioca, and even less have embodied their performer as much as Carioca does. In the early 1940s, Disney was asked to visit South America on a Goodwill Ambassador tour for the United States. Walt, along with some of his staff nicknamed El Grupo, would visit Colombia, Argentina, and Brazil. As a deal with the US government, Disney would visit these countries to keep them from siding with the Axis powers during World War II, and Walt Disney would get the chance to make new films about South America. Walt thought it would be a good idea to represent Brazil with a parrot character as he was touring the country, but he'd yet to really solidify a personality or a voice for a character before leaving Brazil. Joe Oliveira would end up being hired by the Walt Disney Company to voice the parrot, but he contributed much more than just his voice. Try to introduce the Brazilian music, the samba. The what? The samba, you know the samba? No, I don't know. Oh, Brazil, samba, que dá baboleio, que faz gingar. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> you mean the samba? That's right. Ah, I got you now. Mm -hmm. My name's Josh Taylor, this is Modern Mouse, and today I want to talk about the character of Joe Carioca, the man, Joe Oliveira, and how the two connect together. Born in Brazil in 1902, Joe Oliveira would end up being nicknamed the man of eight instruments within his home country. He even created his own hybrid of a mandolin and a guitar, which has a really short neck, but guitar-like sound. He began performing professionally in the early 1920s at social events and charity parties, and became a popular figure, so much so that in 1936 he went on a European tour playing music and performing alongside Aurora and Carmen Miranda, as well as other Brazilian acts. By this point in his career, he'd already developed a style unique to himself. How he danced, how he dressed, and his vaudeville-style act were 100% Zay Carioca, which was the nickname he went by on stage. He would move to Los Angeles in 1940 and began working on films at 20th Century Fox. He performed in the band Bando de Lua, before settling into the Carioca Serenaders and consistently playing with them from 1941 to 1946. Due to his knowledge of several languages, Oliveira was hired at Disney to do the Portuguese voiceover for the 1941 film The Reluctant Dragon. It was there that someone mentioned him as the possible voice for Disney's parrot. Still unnamed and without a personality, Oliveira not only took over the voice, but lent his gestures, clothing style, guitar playing, and singing to that character. And he not only voiced him in English, but in Portuguese, Spanish, and Italian. It was common practice at that time for Disney's animators to sit on a soundstage along with the voice actors to understand their movements and mannerisms. These live action references would then be drawn into the characters, essentially having the character mimic their voice actor. From that, Jose Carioca the Parrot was born. The debut of the character was in 1942's Saludos Amigos, and he appeared even more prominently in the 1944 film The Three Caballeros, where Oliveira got to dance and perform alongside his animated parrot counterpart. Being featured in two different theatrical released films already separates Carioca from some of the other Disney characters, but the parrot continued to play parts in films like 1948's Melody Time and in the 1950s on Disney's TV shows, where you'll even see Oliveira performing in person where one Mouseketeer calls him Jose Carioca specifically. <laughs> You're Joe Carioca! Hello, Mouseketeers! Hi, hi! 
My real name is Jose Oliveira. Have you been to Bahia? No. Adios. <laughs> Oliveira would play the role of the parrot for Disney into the 1960s with roles in the 1960 short Two Happy Amigos and 1962's Carnival Time. All the while, Oliveira continued a legacy of performances outside of Disney. In 1947, he created the band The Carioca Boys, playing live and performing in films like Road to Rio. He'd continue to play with that band, Bando de Lua, or as a solo act into the 1970s. He toured Europe and Brazil while also playing clubs in Los Angeles. Throughout his years after Disney, he continued to play, sing, and act on stage just as he had prior, representing the nickname of Jose Carioca. Oliveira would pass in 1987, but his famous parrot character wouldn't just bear his nickname, but would dance, sing, and show Oliveira's personality long after his death, beginning with the 1988 film Who Framed Roger Rabbit, where he can be seen in a cameo. While Rob Paulson took over the character in 2001 and a variety of different performers have played him over time, the character still dresses, looks, acts, dances, and sings like Joe Oliveira. He appears in several episodes of the Disney Channel show House of Mouse, starting in 2001, the new Mickey Mouse shorts that were created by Paul Rudish starting in 2014, he was in DuckTales in 2017, and was one of the featured main role characters in The Legend of the Three Caballeros that came out in 2018. Jose Carioca also continues to meet fans and performs with his signature suit and umbrella at Disney's theme parks that include Disneyland, Walt Disney World, and the Tokyo Disney Resort. In Brazil, the character has taken on a life as a representative of the country through merchandising. Starting in 1961, the parrot had his own comic in Brazil named Zé Carioca. Production of these comics has been off and on throughout the years, but stories started being printed by publisher Culturama once again in 2020. Jose Carioca may not be Mickey Mouse or may not be Donald Duck, but the character has lasted over 80 years in pop culture, inspired heavily by the performances and life of his original voice. Joe Oliveira. Oliveira's impact on the character is seen more than any other, including Walt Disney's version of Mickey Mouse. Many have lent their voices to animation, but very few have adapted their entire personality and charm to animation like Oliveira did. Like the parrot, Oliveira was a character, and it wasn't just an act that he performed on stage. The character and the act was who he was. So to see Jose Carioca is to see Jose Oliveira. Thank you for watching. I have tons of other Disney legend videos. You can check out the playlist of all of those right here. Uh, you can also check out another video that you might like right here as well. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you took something away from it. And in the meantime, my friends, keep moving forward.